Dear Mythological Image Published by Yogavado.com There is a mythological image of a deer in different cultures. I am modestly adding Georgian. Recently I wrote a post about the mythological image of the deer in different cultures. I decided to add. I will briefly retell what I have already said and extrapolate to other mythological creatures. The deer is mentioned in the annals of the very first king of Georgia, Farnaus. This is a legendary figure hidden behind the veil of time. Here is the legend about him. The young Farnavaz had a vision similar to Joseph's dream from the Bible. In a dream, Joseph saw the sun, the moon, and the stars that bowed to him. Subsequently, he gained power. This is exactly the story with the Georgian prince in his vision the sun descended, stood in front of him, and he washed his face with solar matter. I think Farnavaz performed some kind of sacred act, the essence of which is the cleansing of the psyche. In ancient times, meditation in the sun was a must among the higher castes. The future Tsar told about the vision of his mother and left to hunt. He shot a deer and chased the wounded animal. Having caught up, he did not finish off the deer, imbued with compassion. The young man lay down beside him, trying to ease the suffering. So they spent the night, victim and hunter. In the morning, Farnavaz discovered the entrance to a cave full of gold. Wealth elevated him to the throne. He is a legendary king. The invention of the Georgian writing system is associated with him. Translated from the mythical language, the whole legend can be interpreted as follows. Farnavaz performed a kind of mysterious meditation purification of the psyche with sunlight and shows mercy. Righteous person, meditator and merciful. According to myths, nature changes its attitude towards those who are kind to her. Deer personifies nature. The energy of God. In Georgian mythology, the mother goddess is called Dali. For example, in Indian Kali. Pay attention to the sound. Dali. Kali. There is also Ali the energetic beings. In ancient times, nature was deified and personified as the Great Mother. Nature has reason and cares for us, her children. Sometimes the lessons are painful, sometimes they are pleasant. The Cave of Gold is better understood as a spiritual treasure, wisdom. The deer is often found in legends. The hero chases after him, falling into a different, mythological reality. There is a Georgian legend about a youth in search of immortality. Exactly the story of Gotam Buddha. The young man lives in a rich house, protected from the dark sides of life. But he is not happy, because old age, sickness and death exist. Therefore he leaves in search of immortality. So much has been said about the hero's journey, that it is difficult to add anything. In short, this is a search for truth. The journey itself takes place not in the external world, but in the introspective, mental one. According to legend, the seeker finds a deer, with golden horns reaching the sky. A living staircase to heaven, not made of stone steps, nature itself. 
the hero ascends to the upper world, and comprehends the meaning of being. Returning to find a new era centuries passed on Earth, he never finds relatives for whom he learned the secret of immortality. Since I started talking about the mystical meaning of the image of a deer, I will touch on one more point, human sacrifice. In the Indo-European community, among the Vikings, there was a custom of voluntary sacrifice. In Georgia, before Christianity, this custom also existed. One of the young people expressed a desire to go to the world of the gods. He was spoiled for a year. He lived like a king. All his wishes were fulfilled. A year later, he voluntarily put his throat under the knife. According to legends, once a deer came out of the forest, white, of almost unearthly beauty, offering himself instead of a young man. So the ritual was changed. Instead of young people, the gods received as a sacrifice in the form of deer, which annually left the forest for the slaughter. But with the decline of spirituality, it stopped. So they went on to sacrifice the calf. The animal was fed and cared for for a year. Then they gave him a cup of wine and opium to drink. And the intoxicated animal was quickly, painlessly deprived of life. There are interesting studies. The rats were taught to go through the maze. Then their meat was given to other rats, and they found a way out of the maze easier. Somehow, information was transmitted through food. Apparently the slaughter and eating of the calf after having drunk it is associated with something similar. It is important that before death the animal does not feel fear and pain, so that all this is not transmitted to the participants in the ritual. Maybe vegetarianism has something to do with all this. I think that the mass unconscious put into the image of the deer what we define as nature, matter. With a certain mystical approach, the substance changes its attitude to the visionary. Endowing with spiritual wealth, the only value that is not subject to corruption. Great goddess mythology uses this image of a spiritualized nature. Energy of God instead of dead matter. In mythology, there are plenty of creatures that embody the teleological instinct of nature, to serve. Sometimes it's a dog. We love dogs and mythology has reflected that. There is a legend about Zarathustra, that he was a guru with a dog, he always walked accompanied by a dog. Mythical king, at the end of the Mahabharata ascends to heaven with the dog. Amaran is chained along with a winged dog who is constantly trying to free him. In other versions of the myth, a horse is used instead of a dog. In mythology, the horse is a very common image. Pegasus. The hunchbacked horse. Horses in the chariot of the sun. A unicorn. But I will use the example of a firebird phoenix. In Georgian mythology, Firebird is an energetic creature. 
She and the dragon dwell on the world tree. There is a fight, the dragon periodically eats chicks, the heat of the bird. Sunny youth accidentally falls into a gentle world, saves the chicks, for which he receives an offer to use the help of a phoenix, to climb back. The ritual is described in detail, the hero proceeds to sacrifice, folding the carcasses of cattle on the back of the bird. This is fuel. Starting the way up, to the middle world, Firebird turns its head every now and then and gets another piece of food. But at the very end no carcasses remain. But there is no energy, and the whole mission is under threat. The Sun Youth cuts off his own thigh and sacrifices it to the mouth of the fiery creature. And she reaches the middle world. After landing, Firebird asks why the very last bite was so delicious. The hero answers with the truth. Phoenix touches the feather, and the wound is healed. Without a doubt, we are dealing with a mythologized description of sacrifice, where the emotion of the donor is valued more than ritual. You need to sacrifice something dear, overcoming yourself. This is the secret of the ritual, which helps to comprehend the heights of one's superconsciousness. If we consider mythology in this aspect, read between the lines, we find a certain single belief, common to all of us. Mythology is the universal language of humanity. The unconscious, operating with images, has no language barriers. By understanding the rituals, we have a powerful tool for controlling the right hemisphere. It is important to pay as much attention to the figurative side as to the logical one. Only then will our development be harmonious. And finally, the study of mythology opens up a deep understanding of our people and all of humanity.